<clears throat> Write this number in scientific notation. Use an asterisk for the multiplication symbol. Okay, what are they talking about? What do they want us to do? Well, let's talk about what, what um, we've got regular. So we've got, let me show you, we've got regular, what's called decimal notation. And then we've got um, what's called scientific notation, abbreviated, um, a lot of times you'll see it abbreviated SN scientific notation. So <clears throat> you can have a number like um, four, well, here, no, let me, you could have a number like uh, four, 42,516.23. And then you can rewrite that number in scientific notation. Maybe that's too big. I mean, let me just go. 426.13. Um, you can rewrite that as 4.2613 times 10 to the second power. And that's called scientific notation. These are the same exact number. They're just in two different systems, the regular notation system and the scientific notation system. You know what it's like? It's kind of like if I say one, if I say one or I say uno. That's the same number, right? It's both, it's 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 one in both systems. It's just in two different languages, English, Spanish, right? So that's my point. That's what's going on with regular notation and scientific notation. They're just two different languages. You're saying the same number in both languages. It's just two different languages. This number here and this number here are really the same number. Now, how do you know it's really the same number? Remember what this 10 to the two tells, tells this decimal to do? Go two to the right, and you see it ends up right there, which is exactly where it is right here. So really, both of these numbers are 426.13. This one is just saying it in weird format. It's putting the decimal after the first digit and then putting 10 to a power. Well, that power, that two power, tells that decimal, go two to the right, please. You, you don't really belong right here. Please go two to the right, which means it ends up between the six and the one, which is where it really is. It tells it to go back to where it really belongs. Scientific notation means two things. It means the decimal after the first digit times 10 to some power. I should say the decimal after the first non-zero digit. So it's the decimal after the first non-zero digit times 10 to a power. Okay, so let me give you another example. <clears throat> what if we had 0. 0. 0.00728? How can we rewrite that? number in scientific notation. Well, we put the decimal after the first digit that's not zero, right? After the first non-digit zero, uh, sorry, non-digit, non-zero digit. So it goes right there, but that's not really where it belongs. I mean, the, the decimal is really back there. So you got to go times 10 to a power and that power has to give it instructions to go back where it really belongs. What does it need? Minus three. Do you see why, why it's saying that? Because that minus three is telling that decimal, you don't really belong here. Go back three once, and it's to the edge of the number. Two, three, and it brings in two zeros, just like this. So that makes it go back where it really belongs. And these guys are now the same number, aren't they? <clears throat> so again, regular notation and scientific notation <clears throat> are two languages in which we can say the same number. So this number here, 0. 0.00728, is the same as 7.28 times 10 to the minus three. That's just a different language. That minus three power tells us to go back once, it's to the edge, two, three, it brings in two zeros. 
which is the same as where it was to begin with. That minus three tells that decimal to go back where it really belongs. Okay, so with all that hope clear in your mind, we are, they're giving us this number. Let's do our problem now. They're giving us this number right here. So that, and I, they want me to write it in scientific notation. So it's gonna be 7.17. Let me do a little better here. 7.17 times 10 to some power. <clears throat> now, what power? What power? How do you know what power? Well, whatever the power is <clears throat> that we put up here, it's got to tell this decimal. Hey, decimal, you don't really belong right there between the seven and the one. That's not your real place. You've just been artificially placed there. Go back where you really belong which means it needs to go once. In fact, I'm gonna count them here. If you put it right here, if you put the decimal right there between the seven and the one, what it would need to do to go back where it belongs is go once, and it's to the edge there, two, three, four, five, six. It would need to go back six places. We don't, we don't care about that other zero. It doesn't need to go over that zero. Right, so in other words, there were five zeros, and then it, there were five zeros, and it also needed to go over this seven. So six places back. Does that make sense? So when you artificially place the decimal between the seven and the one, to tell it to go back where it really belongs, you gotta tell it to go back six, because it's gotta go back once to get over the seven and then the five zeros. So back six places altogether. So there's the number written in scientific notation. Now, on the next part, <clears throat> we're gonna go the other way. Let me grab this number. But I'll just, I'll just do this one down here. Um, 37,600. So now, <clears throat> 37,600. Write 37,600 in scientific notation. This will be a new part here. So how do we do that? Well, same kind of way. So we're gonna put the decimal after the first digit that's not zero. So the decimal is gonna be put artificially between the three and the seven, right? That's what scientific notation is. Scientific notation is decimal after the first non-zero digit times 10 to a power. And then what power am I gonna put up here on the 10? to tell the decimal to go back where it really belongs. Well, where does it really belong? Well, um, you might notice we don't, we, don't, we don't see a decimal in the original number at all. Where is the decimal on the original number, the 37,600? There's no decimal. Well, you, you, actually there is a decimal. And um, well, what if I told you the price on that new car is $37,600, a very fancy car. Price on that new car is $37,600. Where's the decimal go? You know where the decimal goes, right? It's at the end, right? If somebody says the price on a car is $37,600 and they don't put the decimal, there's no mystery. You know where the decimal is. It's at the end, 0. 0.00 cents, right? You know that. And that's the truth. So, so anytime a decimal is not showing in a number, it's really at the end, which is something I think you already know. Just think about prices. So yeah, okay, so great. So that's where the decimal really belongs, but we have temporarily, artificially put it right here, put it right here. So we need to give it instructions up here telling it, hey, go back where you really belong, which is one, two, three, four to the right. So this needs to be four. Does that make sense? It tells that decimal, hey, decimal, go one, two, three, four to the right to go back to where you really belong. So let's recap. So when they give us a number like this, and they want us to write it in scientific notation, we always put the decimal after the first digit that's not zero, but then give times 10 to a power, and the power gives it instructions to go back where it really belongs. So in this case, minus six, it has to go back, if it's between the seven and the one, it has to go back once to get over the seven and then five zeros. So back six. You don't need to go over that last zero. 
right? That last zero, the decimal, the decimal doesn't go over that. And then this number, 37,600, that doesn't show a decimal, the decimal is really at the end, like a price. And so if you put the, for scientific notation, they want us to write it in SN, scientific notation. So we put the decimal right here after the first digit that's not zero with times 10 to a power. And that power tells it to go back where it really belongs. One, two, three, four to the right. Positive four. Now, how do we put this on the system? Well, they say right here, use an asterisk. The asterisk is the shift eight. It's above the eight. So that's what this is going to be, asterisk, shift eight. And then same thing down here, asterisk, that's shift eight, which will uh, enter that. Let me, uh, let me actually show that. So I'm going to come over here. Let me find where we're at. All right, here's, here's a different question. So I'm gonna enter this one. How many enters? I'm gonna go 7.85. Now, here comes the times. Oops, eight, five, I didn't move by there. Uh, times, um, so I'm gonna go shift eight. There it is, it made a little dot is what it did. I did shift eight, shift eight times 10. Now what power, then you can hit the power button. Power, what power do I need? It's got to be back uh, two, doesn't it? Back two, like that. And let me submit it. Yep, that's right. And there's how they show the answer, just like that. So you do for that, that times dot in the middle, it's shift eight. And then with the 10 to the power, you hit the, you do the 10 and then you do the power button, minus two, like that. And there we go.